I think the biggest change uh, in the health of our whole country, and particularly Minnesotans, uh, is probably three things. One um, is our increase in the percent of people who are overweight and obese is extremely significant. Even though we're one of the healthier states in the nation, uh, we still have a challenge with that, so that's, that's point one. Point two is, is why are those people overweight and obese? And we're really pointing to data that, that says we are way too sedentary and not physically active enough. So I'd say it's probably those two things together that also collide directly with the green movement, basically, um, because the green movement, in part, is trying to come up with ways to uh, um, address the fossil fuel uh, situation um, the greenhouse effect, and so really you have three major crises that are colliding in what we like to say is a very positive way. You know, basically, let's figure out a way to uh, uh, get people more physically active, especially as they come and go from point A to point B. My favorite example to the aging question is, is a wonderful program out of uh, uh, Canada called 8-80 uh, uh, cities. 8-80 cities are cities that um, address this issue of walking and biking and, and so the, the numbers come from the following. You qualify as an 8-80 city if it's okay for an 8-year-old and okay for an 80-year-old to get out in the community and walk or bike safely without uh, um, unnecessary hazards. I think the biggest public health trend is that uh, uh, we, we have a uh, uh, a real deficiency in, in getting the general population physically active. And one of the easiest ways to add physical activity to your daily and weekly routine is to come up with that concept of destination exercise. So if I have to get from home to the University of Minnesota, I much prefer taking the bike. Um, that's always dependent upon winter weather and meetings and all those variables. But uh, um, I think, I think that that's, that's probably the biggest public health issue right now. And if you look at the numbers on preventable diseases, and whether it's, whether it's diabetes, whether it's uh, uh, obesity, whether it's even asthma, mental health, uh, depression, uh, daily physical activity has a tremendous benefit on that. So in our exercise medicine clinic, we're referred patients to us that the referring physician believes that daily exercise can help that patient with that disease. Uh, well, um, we've, we've got an incredible number of a wide variety of different patients coming in with a wide variety of diseases. And sadly, those diseases, especially in the diabetes realm, are only going to increase if we don't really address this with more physical activity. Both the Centers for Disease Control uh, and the National Institute of Health has come up with some very significant guidelines that every single American needs 150 minutes of moderate physical activity every week. Well, if you do the simple math on 150 minutes of moderate activity per week and you take it five days, we're really saying if each person could get 30 minutes of moderate continuous physical activity each day, we'd be a much healthier nation. And I think that ties into probably the biggest crisis we have in our nation, and that's that we cannot continue spending close to 18 to 19 percent of our GDP, our gross domestic product, on health care costs. So this transportation question for the next 50 years, I believe, is, is a huge question, and it, it can be and should be tied in directly into health care reform. If we as a nation don't address the fact that health care reform is how people get from point A to point B, we're missing an opportunity here. So I feel personally and professionally that the health care reform should bring extra monies into transportation for that specific reason.